from Nashville, Tennessee. This is the day the Lord has made. Join us for the next 30 minutes as we share the gospel ministry of Dale and Jerry Robbins. have a need for prayer, send your prayer request to us at the International Prayer Network. Founded by Pastor Dale Robbins in 1995, this was one of the first prayer ministries on the internet. And together with hundreds of prayer partners, we have since prayed for thousands of requests throughout the world. Just go to the address on your screen at internationalprayernetwork.com and submit a request which will be displayed and prayed for by believers around the globe. Remember, Jesus said, all things are possible to them who believe. And we want to pray and believe with you in your time of need.
What comes to mind when I mention Thanksgiving? Well, if you're like most, you probably think of the holiday we celebrate once a year, but observances of Thanksgiving or giving thanks to God has a greater meaning in history than the annual family dinners we cherish with our families. Thanksgiving is mentioned in the Bible around 140 times and is very similar to the word praise, which is used many times more. Thanksgiving simply means gratitude or thankfulness. But praise, interestingly, means to appreciate, prize, or to appraise with value worthy of honor or thanksgiving. As scripture will show, giving thanks is an integral part of our worship to God, our personal prayer life, as well as feasts and celebrations that go far back in history. The Feast of Tabernacles in the Old Testament may be history's oldest celebration of thanksgiving, day, dating back more than 3,500 years or 1,500 years before the time of Christ. It was not just a day, but for a whole week, as described in Deuteronomy chapter 16. This was apparently preceded by another seven weeks after the beginning of the harvest, probably in the fall. In fact, the 23rd chapter of Leviticus names at least seven feasts of Jehovah or Yahweh. These and other occasions throughout the Old Testament were designated to offer thanksgiving and praise as well as to offer up gifts to the Lord for His goodness and blessings. David and Solomon were among many of Israel's kings and prophets who called special times of celebration and thanksgiving to God. And even after the 70 years of, of uh, Babylonian ca captivity, Jeruz uh, Zerubbabel and Nehemiah called the people together for thanksgiving to God. Many have suggested that it's been for this reason that God showed special favor upon Israel, that in, in spite of their lengthy history of flaws and disobedience and sin, they returned to Him with acts of worship and thanksgiving. In the New Testament, thanksgiving was something that the early Christians, together with the apostles and the disciples, expressed to the Lord frequently, not only on the Lord's Day, but every day during both public and private occasions. In fact, Paul taught that thanksgiving to God was something to be applied in all aspects of life, worship, and prayer. He said, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Celebrations of thanksgiving were later observed by the early Britons, Saxons, Scots, and others in Europe from the earliest centuries, although not always widely observed or declared nationally. Years later in England, a frequent celebration of thanksgiving was called Harvest Home. In North America history, the first Thanksgiving was held in Newfoundland in 1578 by an English minister by the name of Waffle. Another was held in Virginia in 1607. Still another, the one we generally acknowledge as America's first Thanksgiving, was held in Plymouth, Plymouth Colony in 1621 by the Puritan Christian Pilgrims. Attended by 53 pilgrims and 90 Indians, it was not only a feast, but included three days of prayer and giving of thanks to God for their survival, for their newfound religious freedom, and for saving the crops that year with much needed rainfall. Although subsequent Thanksgiving days were celebrated, it was not until President George Washington proclaimed Thanksgiving Day on November 26, 1789. The celebration became, after that, a celebrated custom. And in 1859, after several appeals were made by the famed author and patriot Sarah Hale, all but two governors issued proclamations for Thanksgiving Day. She finally wrote to President Abraham Lincoln, enclosing a copy of Washington's proclamation of 1789, and suggested that he appoint a national Thanksgiving Day. And at her suggestion, the president proclaimed this very thing, a national day of thanksgiving on July 15th after the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863. 
It was one of the most decisive battles of the Civil War, and there was a lot to give thanks for. In the years that followed, gatherings to offer thanks to God were frequently called by clergymen as well as public officials, hosted in homes, churches, schoolhouses, or public buildings. Sometimes public appeals were made in response to unusual tragedies or matters in which God's intervention was greatly needed. For instance, a great drought and depression visited Minnesota during the years of 1874 through 77, and at the time, at the same time, a grasshopper plague visited as well. On April 27, 1877, Governor Pillsbury proclaimed a, a, a state day of fasting and prayer. Multitudes gathered in their homes, in schools, churches, and other places to beseech God to lift the plague of grasshoppers. And God heard their prayers, and millions of these insects died. This was followed by a thanksgiving for his lifting of the curse and allowing abundant crops again. They declared the words of the psalmist, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Psalm 105 and verse 1. That fall in 1877, Minnesota had a, had a wonderful crop. Years later in America, Thanksgiving Day came to be celebrated on the fourth Thursday of every November and became officially recognized as a national holiday in 1939 by President Franklin Roosevelt. And it was approved by Congress in 1941. This tradition remains to this day, although the spiritual meaning, sadly, has uh, eroded over the years to the place that it's mostly seen as just another secular holiday. Unfortunately, the national meaning and significance of thanksgiving for our nation's freedom and blessings has largely been forgotten over the years. The Apostle Paul, in fact, warned Timothy that the last days would be characterized by things like this, by unthankfulness in 2 Timothy 3.2, which is a reality that we deal much with today. Most of society has become preoccupied with ingratitude more than anything else. Ingratitude is a dangerous condition to fall into because it not only digs a deeper ditch of difficulty and trouble in our lives, but it uh, especially brings about God's displeasure, especially as it pertains to God's people. Ingratitude and its expressions of grumbling and complaining serves the very opposite of thanksgiving. Consider the children of Israel, whom God delivered from Egyptian bondage by miraculous means and then provided them astonishing provisions and food in the wilderness, such as the manna, a type of light bread that dropped down from, from above. This was an extraordinary miracle. Uh, if, if it is true that up to three million Jews were wandering in the, in the desert, imagine the enormous amount of food, water, provisions that had to be uh, provided for all of these people to be fed and supplied. This was an astonishing miracle. But amazingly, despite these miracles of what God had done for them and was providing for them, the people began complaining that it wasn't to their liking. They not only grumbled about their provisions, uh, about the manna that was falling from heaven, but also against Moses, which was really a complaint against God, who was merely using Moses to carry out his will. So the Bible says, when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, for the Lord heard it, and his anger was aroused. So the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some of, the, some of them the outskirts of the camp. Numbers 11, verse 1. Why did complaining displease God? Because it was an expression of unthankfulness, of ingratitude for the things he had done for them as well as an, ex an expression of unbelief in God to provide for them. On the other hand, consider the faith of those who gave thanks to God, such as David or Paul, even when they struggled or hadn't seen the fruitfulness or the answers to prayers that they had, had hoped for. 
Even while David was in the wilderness fleeing his son Absalom, who was trying to kill him, David wrote these words of praise and thanksgiving to God in the Psalms. He said, Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. Psalm 63, 3 through 4. That's why he was being pursued and they were trying to kill him. People of faith don't start complaining and spewing ingratitude when things go wrong or when things don't work out the way they want or hope. People of faith keep praising and thanking God, not only for what He has done, for what they believe He will yet do, because as Paul wrote, God promises that all things work together for good to them who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose, Romans 8.28. This doesn't mean that everything will always be good or pleasant or to our liking, but will be working together. It, you have God's word on it, that it will be working together, both the good and the bad, for a good and beneficial outcome in the end. Giving thanks to God is something that God's children do, just because they are His, just because He is our God. As David said, Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name, the upright shall dwell in your presence. Psalm 140 and verse 13. And again he said, So we, your people and sheep of your pasture, will give you thanks forever. We will show forth your praise to all generations. Psalm 79, 13. And even if God chooses not to provide the kind of blessings we hope, or, to, or uh, to do the things in the way or the time frame that we expect or desire, we still give Him thanks, praise, and glory honor, and honor because of who He is, because He is our Lord God, because He is the Savior of our soul. As the prophet Habakkuk said, even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails, and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields, and the cattle barns are empty. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation." Habakkuk 3, 17-18. Paul certainly knew what it was to experience ordeals. I think so. As he wrote many of his epistles encouraging believers to be thankful to God from a prison cell of all places. At one point, he described some of the daily challenges he often faced. He said, From the Jews, five times I received forty stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A day and a night I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness, often in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my, my deep concern for all the churches. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 24 through 28. He sounded like a lot of pastors I know. But as he outlined these ordeals that he faced, he was a person of worship and praise and thanksgiving that he and Silas at the midnight hour being cast into the Philippian jails uh, praised God and sang his praises and worshipped him in the midnight hour. This is the same apostle who told us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-18 Once again, everything may not always be good in your life or mine, but we are, are serving God. And if we are, we know that everything is working together for our good in the end. Giving thanks is also a type of 
gate pass into the presence of God. It's the heart and attitude of a person who loves and believes in God and is an expression of our praise and worship to Him that literally ushers us into His spiritual presence. As the psalmist wrote, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Psalm 100 and verse 4. And the writer of the book of Hebrews, which is assumed to be Paul, equated praise and thanksgiving to the, the offerings and sacrifices that the Hebrews who were used to offering up to the Lord. He said, therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Hebrews 13, 15. And David had also made the same connection when he's, he said, Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Psalm 107, verse 22. Finally, the Bible tells us it's good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your thanksgiving in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Psalm 92, verses 1 through 2. I hope that you will apply this in your life today with me as we have many needs that we want to pray for, but I want us to begin by giving God thanks and praise. It's not complaining that brings us into the presence of God. It's not by, by grumbling, griping, or, or, or castigating the Lord for the things that are going wrong in our life. We're not going to get anything from God by blaming Him. But we're going to receive God's uh, joy, His peace, and even miracles and answers to prayer as we honor Him, as we worship Him, as we lift Him up, and as we give Him thanks. I want us, if we would, to pray for so many. We get uh, so many requests from those who are struggling with COVID. By the way, uh, there, are, if you, there are those of you that would like to receive prayer uh, during the week by many of the people that are connected with our ministry. Go to internationalprayernetwork.com and submit your prayer request there. And that puts it out in the, uh, the, uh, the, the public uh, airwaves of the, the web so that many people can see your prayer requests and can be praying besides me and Jerry. We will always pray when you send us your prayer request. And uh, even if we don't manage to get it, uh, your prayer request out here uh, before the camera and, and talk about it, we pray, are praying behind the scenes. And if you get your prayer request into the, the prayer center, it will get out in, into the uh, hands of a lot more people who will be praying. Just when you do that, don't, don't give personal information when you do that, but just give your first name and general location, that sort of thing, and, and state your prayer request, and it will be out there to be seen by thousands of people praying for you. But let's pray together, and I'm going to ask for an expression of thanksgiving to the Lord that we would offer to Him to, be, to begin with. And you may want to just lift your hands with me, and I do this often, and don't let it bother you. I lift my hands all the time and worship and praise the Lord, and you can too. And if we will do that in agreement together, I believe that it will express faith in such a way that God will begin to undertake in our behalf. But let's pray together. Father in heaven, those that are watching today, my friends, family members, and, and people throughout the world, essentially, Lord, we lift our hands today to you in giving thanks and praise to you. We, we're not worthy of the goodness and the extraordinary things that you've done in our lives. Just the fact that we're breathing and we're alive, Lord, is a blessing that you've provided for us that we sometimes take for granted. We give you praise and thanks for the breath of life. We give you praise and thanks for this day that you've given us. We give you praise and thanks for being our loving creator that cares about us. And Lord, we bring to you our needs and requests. Many are struggling with COVID today, with other sicknesses, illnesses. There are those struggling to pay their bills, struggling uh, from one day to the next with challenges, difficulties. There are pastors and, and ministers today that are facing difficulty in being able to, uh, to balance the 
uh, the income, against the dropping attendances many are facing. Lord, we ask you in the name of Jesus to hear the cry of our heart. And we ask you, Lord, together with thanksgiving and with praise to you, to hear our cry, to answer our prayers, Lord, to meet the needs. Bring healing to those who are hurting today. In the name of Jesus, bring healing. Take away the pain and discomfort, the suffering. Lord, bring the miracle that is needed. I get so many requests from people who are, are, are looking for a, a better pay from their jobs. And while there are many jobs available right now, there's, uh, there are, are, are too many low paying jobs and, and there are those looking for something better. Help them, Lord, that they can manage uh, their, their finances and they can pay their bills and they can provide for their family. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Say this together with me, would you? Folks, in the name of Jesus. Once again, all together, in the name of Jesus. And as we say this together, uh, across, across uh, those uh, viewers out there that are, that are watching elsewhere, as we say his name together, there is power released in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Would you say amen to that? Well, God bless you today. We love you. And as I share many times, uh, Jerry and I, we do care about you. We're here for you. We pray for you. We'd love to hear from you. Go to the address on your screen. Jot us a line. Tell us that you're, you're watching. If you're on Facebook, you have uh, the op opportunity to send a a uh, direct message or a personal message and we'd be glad to hear from you pray for you we have many who do and we'd love to hear from you uh, this week and this is a reminder also that uh, this is the day is seen not only in facebook and youtube but also on the preach the word worldwide network that goes out across the world is on the glory star a satellite network on direct tv as well as uh, on the air uh, stations across uh, the United States. And so we're so honored to be able to come your way. We'd love for you to write us, tell us where you're watching, and we will be in prayer for you. So until uh, next week, next time, just know we love you and we'll be praying. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. For more information, please visit our website at victorious.org. Until next time, God bless you.